Hi, and welcome back to L10. I'm Fiona Pando. We are excited to be back up and running, although six feet apart. To start, here are some headlines from the beginning of the school year. Lawrenceville's 211th convocation, held virtually this year, celebrated the reopening of school for the 2020-2021 school year. Four houses were honored for their service, scholarship, and spirit. Congratulations to the Woodall House for the Adams Cup, Stanley House for the Green Cup, McClellan House for the Chivers Cup, and Carter House for the House Cup. At last, most boarding students have returned to campus in the final round of arrivals. Students came back to campus signing the best for all agreement, partaking in one of many COVID-19 tests, and moved into the residential houses. Senior news producer Caroline Bednar asked several Laurentians to vlog their journey back to Lawrenceville and their experience returning back to their houses after more than six months of going virtual. Hi L10, we're looking forward to seeing everyone on campus. Hi. <laughs> Prefect this year, um, and I'm getting ready to greet the new freshman this morning. Moving in, guess who I found? Hello. Hey. Hey guys, so it's Friday, September 11th afternoon, and we're all having lunch out here, socially distanced with our housemaster, Mr. Cunif. What do you enjoy most about campus? I'm. I enjoy the most with uh, being with the guys. It's definitely great to be with friends and also people. And you know, just being around people is just really nice. So I'm currently getting my stuff from Bowrin. Um, I'm in their warehouse and it's insane. How much do you miss campus? I did miss campus a lot. Now, now, now I'm back, I'm happy. What do you miss most about it? Um, just being with people, being with everybody. Long before students began packing to return to campus, the faculty and administration were hard at work preparing to resume two large aspects of Lawrenceville, House and Harkness. Our feature team brings you an interview with the Director of Teaching, Learning and External Partnerships, Dana Koistra who spearheaded Lawrenceville's return to Harkness Learning in the context of COVID-19. As you know, one of the things we all love about Lawrenceville is the ability to be together in the same space and have conversations. But as you also know, um, the virus is gonna prevent us from having as many kids in our room as we normally would. And even though our classes are typically small, they're gonna be very small, right? So most of the rooms can only have about seven or so kids in them at any given time in order to conform to CDC and, and state standards. So our solution to this, um, so that we aren't creating kind of um, so many different little factions across the school as folks are trying to go to school together was to create these hybrid classrooms. Teachers are going to do all kinds of different things. It's just that it'll depend on what the activity is that day. And we've encouraged folks to not be led by the technology, but rather to be led by the activity. What is it that you want kids to get out of this? What do you want them to understand? What's the best thing to do that day to make sure that they do understand it? And then make the technology bend to the plan as opposed to the other way around. The faculty are spending, for example, if we have a course team meeting, we're like, oh, let's do it a hybrid because we need to figure out how to do this. And um, I think that it, do, it hasn't actually taken us very long to to make sure that we're paying attention to the folks who are who are zooming in, um, it didn't. I, I thought it was going to be a, lo, a, a kind of steeper learning curve. It hasn't been that bad. So I think that everybody's just going to be working through. We have um, this. I you know we all know how to teach online now, and we all know how to teach in the classroom. And this hybrid model is new for everybody. Now with more headlines. Fourth former Charlotte Bednar, as featured on L10 last year, is now ranked number one in New Jersey and number seventh in the nation among high school girls cross country runners. Bednar has received many accolades for her achievements, including her status as an all-American runner. Sustainable Fair, the school's dining service, and the Bunn Library produced two videos highlighting the changes made in light of COVID-19, 
Some changes include grab-and-go meals and contactless book pickup. You can view them on the Lawrenceville YouTube channel. Last spring, the L10 executive directors brought you an exclusive interview with head of school Murray on his decision to close campus for the spring term. Mr. Murray spoke to us again to answer our questions about his decision to reopen campus and the extensive planning process prior to reopening. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Murray, for joining us for this interview. Um, I guess the first question to start off is, how was the transition back to campus made? I mean, we invested a lot in a lot of time, energy, and effort into reopening, and a lot, you know, was asked of the faculty and the administration and you know the guys and, and men and women in facilities who do so much. So part of it is just the health and well-being of people. You know, we're a really strong community, and I really believe in this community. But we learned some really serious issues last, you know, late spring, early summer, about thing things that demand our attention. You know, the Black at Lawrenceville Instagram post was really, really important information and trying to work on that remotely just kind of seems impossible. So in, in my mind and in, in the minds of others, that was another important reason to try to pull together as a community. How will the integration of the day students will happen? For example, how will they become involved in house life, uh, meal service, or athletics? So day students are obviously a huge part of Lawrenceville um, and we really want to make sure we do right by them. We did make the decision that it would be hard to, you know, continue life as normal with day students coming into the houses during this period of time. So we've had to think about that differently. They'll certainly be involved with, you know, outdoor activities as we get to that. And then, you know, obviously kind of virtual meetings and things like that. So those kinds of affiliations will be, will be there. But we had to give day students a different kind of home base on campus just for zooming into classes and doing homework and things. So I think people are aware that we've set up Bun differently. So there are assigned um, carols in Bun, or I think KAC is the other place where there's space set aside specifically for day students. So they always have a place to go uh, and be on campus outside of class. How many positive cases will it take for the students on campus to go home? We've done a lot of, we've kind of a, sort of a risk scenario matrix, and we have kind of like a low risk, kind of a green zone. We have sort of a yellow, what's a moderate risk, an orange, and then red. So green would be, you know, what if we had one or two cases? And these are kind of, you can plug in different numbers, but these are just kind of hypotheticals. But, you know, one or two cases, one person isolates at home, one isolates on campus. Let's assume that the cage contagion seems to be random, that our, our systems are working. Community has full faith and trust. The lab results are coming in as scheduled. So, you know, we're kind of good to go. You know, it, it, so it's a series of interlocking elements. And I would say kind of like a, you start to get to a higher risk range when you might say, let's just say we have 20 positive cases. Maybe 10 can go home. Maybe 10 are isolating on campus. Um, maybe we have 70 students in quarantine. And let's say they're spread out in a bunch of different houses. So that starts to and let's say we, we start to wonder if maybe the infections are occurring in the classroom. So something isn't right there. So that might not in and of itself close us down, but that would get very worrisome. One phrase I, I use is we do this scenario planning because we're trying to, we're not looking for the license plate of the bus that just hit us. We're looking to see the bus coming and get out of the way. Thinking about the future a little bit, when there will be a vaccine, hopefully against COVID-19, will there be a requirement for all students to receive that vaccine when it becomes available and is safe? My understanding is that on a national level, Dr. Fauci isn't saying necessarily that they would be required on a national level. Though, you know, it's part of the landscape in this country when you think about you know, there, there are required vaccines to go to school. So things like diphtheria and polio and chickenpox and measles. Um, so it wouldn't be a huge leap to make to ask that students coming into a school would be required to. We heard that the school is actually over enrolled right now. So we were wondering how the school plans to welcome all of the students when we go back into our normal dorms, hopefully. Sure. So let's uh, knock on wood. Let's let's assume that's going to happen. And um, we've been thinking about that, too. So right now, my understanding is Haskell is empty. That gives us a little bit of room to grow into. Retaining some rooms in HGI may be an option for us. And then, of course, if, if things are really normal, um, 
which is probably optimistic, but if they were, we could add back some of the doubles that have been turned into singles right now. So I, I think there's a way for us to manage this and we're working on that um, right now as we speak. That's all for this week's Back to School show. As always, we welcome your suggestions. If you have a story to tell, please let us know by email or DM us on one of our social media platforms. From all of us here at L10, welcome back to school, wear your mask and palm tracer, and we'll see you next time.